The Spanish conquistador, known as Hernán Cortés, was born in 1485 in the Spanish village of Medellín, to a noble family of modest means. He was the son of Martín Cortés de Monroy, a Spanish infantry captain, and Catalina Pizarro Altamirano. As a young boy, he was restless and adventurous and was known for his curiosity and love of exploration. Cortés received a good education, studying law for a time in Salamanca. However, he was not content to stay in school, and yearned for adventure and the chance to make his fortune in the new world. In 1504, at the age of 19, he sailed to Hispaniola, the modern-day island shared by Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Cortés initially worked for several years as a farmer and a notary, before later participating in the conquest of Cuba with Diego Velázquez in 1511. After successfully subjugating the island, Cortés was named mayor of the city of Santiago. In 1519, Cortés was appointed captain general of a mission to explore and colonize the mainland of Mexico by Diego Velázquez, who had become the governor of Cuba and a powerful figure in the New World. The two men had a complex and often contentious relationship, which came to a head when Cortés defied orders to return to Cuba, after Velázquez grew suspicious of his loyalty. Cortés landed on the Yucatán Peninsula with a small army of around 600 men. Upon arriving, Cortés founded the city of Veracruz and won several battles against the natives, who were terrified of the Spanish firearms and horses. After victory against the Tabascans, Cortés was gifted 20 young female slaves by the defeated natives. One of these slaves, named La Malinche, would become invaluable to Cortés as a translator and intermediary during the conquest. After hearing of the rich and powerful Aztec empire from the local tribes, he began his march inland, towards their capital of Tenochtitlan. Along the way, Cortés established alliances with several indigenous groups who were unhappy under Aztec rule. They offered their services as warriors and increased Cortés's military power. As Cortés and his troops continued their advance on Tenochtitlan, they were met by a delegation of Aztec nobles, who urged them to turn back. Cortés refused, and he and his men continued their march toward the city. They reached the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan, present-day Mexico City, in November 1519 and were amazed by the size and grandeur of the city, which was built on an island in the middle of a lake. It was here that Cortés met the Aztec emperor, Moctezuma II. Cortés was initially welcomed and showered with gifts by the Aztec ruler, but relations deteriorated between them and Moctezuma was taken hostage, after several Spanish soldiers were killed at Vera Cruz by Aztec warriors. With Moctezuma now a prisoner, Cortés used him as a puppet, to try and rule the Aztec empire. Soon after this event, in 1520, Cortés received news that the governor of Cuba, Diego Velázquez, had sent a rival expedition to Mexico under the command of Panfilo de Narváez. His force of 1,100 men were to arrest Cortés for disobeying orders and take control of his expedition. Cortés, realizing the threat that Narváez posed to his plans, quickly assembled a small force of 200 men and marched to the coast to confront him. He left the conquistador, Pedro de Alvarado, in charge of Tenochtitlan with the rest of his troops. Cortés successfully defeated Narváez and thwarted his attempts to arrest him near the town of Sempoala. After their defeat, Narváez's men chose to join with Cortés, thus bolstering his forces further. Upon returning to Tenochtitlan, Cortés was horrified to find the city in uprising. Alvarado, fearing for the safety of his men, had killed many of the Aztec nobles who had gathered for an important religious festival in the main plaza of the city. The massacre triggered a fierce backlash from the natives. After Moctezuma was killed, in a bitter standoff between the Spaniards and Aztecs, Cortés was forced to flee Tenochtitlan during a nightmarish retreat known as the Night of Sorrow, where many of his men were killed or captured. Undeterred, Cortés regrouped and returned to Tenochtitlan with a larger force, and in 1521 laid siege to the city. Weakened by disease brought by the Spanish and cut off from supplies of food and water, the Aztecs struggled to fend off Cortés and his troops. The fighting lasted three months and was intense and brutal, but the Aztecs were finally crushed by the Spaniards and their allies. Cortés established Mexico City, on the ruins of Tenochtitlan, and began a process of colonization and exploitation of the region which lasted many years. He returned to Spain in 1528 and was received as a hero by King Charles V, after bringing an immense amount of land and gold into Spanish possession. He led many other expeditions including ones to Honduras and Baja California, however, he faced several legal challenges and accusations of cruelty and misconduct, and his reputation suffered in later years. 
He died in relative obscurity in Seville in 1547, at the age of 62. His legacy is complicated, with some seeing him as a hero and others as a villain. On the one hand, he was a skilled military strategist who was able to conquer a powerful empire with a much smaller force. He was also a skilled diplomat who was able to win over the support of the indigenous peoples who opposed the Aztecs. On the other hand, Cortés was responsible for the deaths of thousands, and his conquest of Mexico led to the enslavement and exploitation of indigenous peoples. His actions paved the way for the Spanish colonization of the Americas and the spread of European culture and values. Despite the controversy surrounding his legacy, there is no denying the impact that Cortés had on the history of Mexico and the Americas. His legacy continues to be felt to this day.